Hello, everyone. Hello, Mark. It's nice to be with you today. How are fine. you? We're fine. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Um, we are happy to be with you today for this uh, new webinar about uh, microscopy and periodontology. I'm very happy to be with uh, Mark. Mark is my is my father, as you may know. We have the same uh, the same name. Uh, he's a dentist since almost 40 years, a speaker and also uh, an author. Um, 20 years ago, we created the International Institute of Periodontology. It's a school. Uh, with the mission to assist practitioner in the implementation of the antiparasitic treatment that we call the Bonheur method today, um, a, a method aimed to cure periodontitis, all kinds of periodontitis. To date, we have more than a thousand dentists and their staff. We have uh, participated to our seminar called Periodontal Health, a modern approach, a modern microbiological approach. Thousands of patients have benefited from or treatment, uh, a treatment mainly developed by Dr. Bonner, uh, and now they are cured. So um, the International Institute is active in uh, many countries, especially America, France, uh, all Europe, uh, and now all around the world. Uh, year after year, uh, we carry out numerous presentations in scientific, scientific conferences and, and university. Uh, we have many links with several uh, research centers, including Pasteur in France, and with, with our partner, we've completed many studies on the gain related to the application of our method uh, or the role of parasites in periodontitis. So today, we're going to spend almost an hour together. First, we're going to st start with a case. It's called case number 23. Then we'll go around the, the history of uh, the treatment method. Uh, then we'll talk about our vision of periodontitis. Finally, we'll go with the path, the patient's journey toward health, uh, the presentation of all the steps in uh, typical cases, and then we'll go with the conclusion. You, you will have time to ask a question at any time. So here we go. Thank you, Frederick, for uh, this introduction. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Welcome to... Uh, everybody uh, coming in for this uh, little webinar. Uh, so what I would like to discuss this morning is uh, how uh, periodontal disease is really easy to detect and also easy to prevent when you have the right tool and how you really can heal uh, completely, completely heal uh, our patients. So we just want to show you a little case here, this uh, 35 years old um, man with uh, periodontal disease with no hygiene. Uh, of course, when you have no more bone on the uh, teeth, it's difficult to keep them, but as long as you have uh, one third of bone or uh, three millimeter in the, um, around the root, you may uh, be able to keep those teeth. So the first thing we want to explain to you is uh, having the microscope, we clearly can see what is going on into the sulcus. Uh, many, many dentists and periodontists, um, we want to look at the clinical, what is going on into the clinical area of the patient. But many times with the microscope, you can prevent, you can preview what's going to happen to the clinical side of the disease because clinical is some kind of um, uh, conclusion it is post um, post uh, disease appearance so but this is uh, periodontal disease is dysbiotic uh, microbiota and inflammatory cells so with the microscope we easily can detect and prevent the disease so uh, you see if you look at the microscope this, those are 1000 magnification we clearly see uh, the presence of amoeba so amoeba is a parasite it's entamoeba gingivalis is present into the sulcus when you look in the into the microscope so it's really easy to access to see and explain to the patient so before like here you have some kind of a nest of parasite 
And those parasites, we know they're there for more than 100 years, so it's relatively easy to see, uh, the same as uh, bacteria or inflammatory cell. So those parasites, if you look closely at them, it's been shown for uh, about 50 years that they nourish us from the nucleus of white cell and inside of a red cell. So those amoeba here, as well as bacteria causing problem, but particularly those amoeba, they nourish us from blood, from red cell and white cell. So if you see those parasites within the gum, clearly patient will be having periodontal uh, bone loss. So what we do after treatment, if we get rid of those bacteria, we get rid of those parasites, we get rid of the inflammatory cells, and we go back to normal, like here, we go back to normal microbiota. So if you have normal microbiota, you can make sure uh, every clinical sign will go on after that, and pocket will close, bleeding will stop, and patient uh, can be healed and uh, cure, of course. So, uh, typical example would be like this patient, you find the charting, you see the bleeding point, you see pocket ranging from uh, four, five, six millimeters, typical case. And when we do the treatment, removing all the parasite, you'll see we have no more bleeding point and we have a uh, pocket close to one, two, or three millimeter. And this is what happened to uh, all our patients. So how come we do say we can cure periodontal disease as other might say periodontal disease is a chronic disease, is, uh, you know, you keep the disease for all your life. This is absolutely not true. In fact, it comes from uh, an idea that you cannot completely cure because you're not used to completely cure every of your patients. So when you start asking question, how come uh, root planning is not working? How come I don't have pocket closer? Then you go just like I was before in 1990. Uh, I used to do, uh, you know, root uh, planning, surfaceage root planning, and I find not much result, maybe 10, 20% pocket closer, much bleeding even after uh, root planning. And then I usually, like I learned in school, dental school, I did uh, surgery flaps and everything. And still there was a lot of uh, patient having the disease even after treatment. Sometimes we have 50% pocket closure, sometimes 80%, but still the disease was there, pus was still coming on after uh, some years. So I was really dissatisfied with conventional treatment. And then I met Dr. Trevor Lyons in Ontario, Canada. I, he, uh, he made um, a journey, uh, a day where we can learn his technique, and he wrote a book, Introduction to Protozoa and Fungi in Periodontal Infection. And when I saw this uh, doctor, I was really surprised seeing the images of the microbes on the microscope and seeing the, all, all those parasites, seeing those white cells, and seeing how patient could be cured. So I did not invent the really thing. I made up a protocol which makes sure you can cure all. I mean, all your patient, but I learned this from Dr. Trevor Lyons, who was, if you want, um, some uh, student of Dr. Kais. And Dr. Lyons brought up real new thing with this protozoa problem we find in periodontal disease. So we developed a treatment protocol so you can take care of all your patients. So we realized all our patients at that time was 30 years ago, all our patients were cured at that time. So we were very excited and saying this to everybody, order of dentists, period of this. And it went like nobody wants to believe we had that 
much success and uh, it was really difficult for them to even think we can cure every periodontal disease and make sure it will not come back and uh, have the disease again. So uh, we made finally made some uh, television uh, science uh, découvert. We made uh, those uh, video in uh, Canada explaining how we do treat the patient how we can cure those patients. So this was uh, on YouTube, this was on the internet, uh, this you can find. And we wrote later a uh, protocol, which we call a uh, protocol uh, healing, periodontal healing protocol, Bonner and Dunoyer, which is uh, which you can find on inter internet everywhere, or American Academy of Periodontology, you can find our protocol, which is about 115 pages, uh, well explained. And then we made some more writing in journal, medical uh, journal, uh, dental journal in France. And we made uh, um, Actuality Odontostomatology journal, explaining the technique, explaining how we can cure uh, more than 95% of patients. And those 99% person of patient, uh, I mean, 100 patient, on 100 patient, we had 99 having 100%, and we have 5% a, a little less success, like 80 or 85% uh, cure, but most patients, 95% of them are completely cured, which is no more pocket, no more bleeding, uh, no more nothing. I mean, everything was fine, normal biofilm. So we wrote this journal, uh, how we can uh, cure the disease. And then we went to a parasite journal uh, explaining that, yes, in within periodontal disease, we really in clearly can find those parasite, parasite, which is a pathogen, which is hematophage, which feeds on white cell and red cell so your system immune system cannot be uh, uh, favorable for your gum and bone so we made sure it was this parasite was not macrophage or other cell really was uh, proven with pcr that we had the uh, parasite entomoeba gingivalis and other of our friend in 19 in 2015 also found uh, uh, we find the uh, trichomonostenax a second parasite in about uh, almost one third of the patient most of them having uh, aggressive periodontal disease so this one too has been declared uh, pathogen in 2015 so we wrote again in the Frontier Journal uh, uh, last uh, couple of years, re reassessing the role of uh, the amoeba, Antamoeba gingivalis and periodontitis. So explaining, yes, you can find bacteria, but you can find also those uh, pathogen parasites and how they do to feed on the white cell and red cell. And then uh, this year, at the beginning of the, this year, 2020, we had friends from um, Germany who wrote uh, really uh, Antemoeba gingivalis really causes oral inflammation and tissue destruction. So uh, they found that the, we can find the amoeba getting through the epithelial cell, going to the fibroblast, and they really declared this um, amoeba is clearly a pathogen and it has more interleukin and cytokine uh, about 10 times more than we, what you can find on porphyro monas gingivalis bacteria so today we clearly can see uh, we have uh, bad bacteria pathogen bacteria and periodontal disease but also those parasites are very frequent so this technique, this, what we see on the microscope, we uh, have uh, uh, about 1,000 trained practitioners uh, in Europe. We have some in the US, in Canada, in Australia, New Zealand. We have many countries, Israel. We have dentists doing our technique. And I just want to try to explain the best way uh, how you could have same result, reproduce the result we have 
uh, without any surgery, without any pain, even without uh, root planning, because we just go disinfection and then remove calculus, uh, easy way. So what is periodontitis is, uh, is we, we need really to, to cure this disease because half of the patient have uh, this disease. Uh, we can, uh, all those patients can benefit from those uh, appointments we are doing. Uh, if we look at what is going on with probing and with uh, uh, root planning, uh, most of the time you still have uh, a lot of patients have bone loss even after root planning, scaling and uh, root planning, they still have the disease. After three months, you still f see the same microbes, same bacteria, and we really can say doing root planning uh, for years, for more than 50 years, you cannot really prevent the uh, the tooth loss in most patients. Two thirds of patients still have tooth loss, so the disease is not stop removing calculus or having nice uh, root. Uh, nice uh, mirror-like root. So uh, really we have to look at what the microbe, the root of the disease, it really is microbes. So most dentists we, we know or we learn about bacteria. Bacteria, yes, have a real tendency to explain having or not having the disease, but it's not always present, like you have bad bacteria higher in periodontitis than in health, but still you have some in health. And it could be the same for good bacteria uh, in health, and you have a little less ba good bacteria in, periodon in periodontitis uh, activity. But those bacteria are not clearly, we cannot find one bacteria all the time. It's very difficult. And most of the time, uh, dentists will not look at those bacteria, thinking mostly of calculus. But calculus is not the problem of periodontal disease. Calculus is a consequence of a pathogen microbiota. So what you have to look at first is a little bit the definition of the periodontal disease. So definition of the disease is this biotic microbe. So what's best to see this biotic microbe as a microscope will give you. And same thing for um, inflammatory, inflammatory cell. If you look on the microscope, you see all those cells like neutrophil, monocyte, macrophage, M1, M2. All this you can see on the microscope. So why not use it? So this is what happened to us 30 years ago when we used the technique for more than 10, 30 years having a complete cure of uh, most patients who will do the protocol. So looking at the microscope here on the um, green background, you can find uh, normal uh, biofilm. So this non-motile bacteria, those are like dots and lines, like little cocci and filament, and aggregation of cocci and filament will form what we call common cell and normal or healthy microbiota. This goes for everybody. You'll be uh, little children, uh, adolescent, adult, or uh, older adult. Uh, we will see the same, exactly the same microbiota for healthy, completely healthy uh, people. So we see those little non motile bacteria, and we will see epithelial cells uh, very present. So this is uh, always healthy microbiota. Now, when you get gingivitis, either plaque or either local factor or systemic factor uh, bringing a problem to the gingiva, you will have gingivitis. So when you have gingivitis, you may find a little bit of white cell or sometimes many white cell when it is very established and you see those uh, uh, very active bacteria. So those bacteria mostly are three kinds, like they are orange um, and red complex of Sokransky. So you find those uh, spirochetes, which are uh, red complex of Sokransky. You have the vibrio, which represent Tanarella, 
are also uh, red complex of Sokansky and some bacilli, some bacilli which are orange complex. So we find those bacteria in gingivitis, mostly spirochetes would be the mostly present, and you have those white cells coming in. But gingivitis is, everybody can cure gingivitis relatively easily. Uh, it's just we have good hygiene, remove plaque, remove local factor, remove systemic factor, that'd be a problem, and then you go back to uh, health. Now, periodontal disease is a lot more difficult because what we see with conventional and normal treatment, you don't get rid of this biofilm. If you do root planning, you look at the um, biofilm after uh, one or two or three months, you still find about 95% of the same pathogen uh, biofilm you had at the beginning. So microscope will help you really remove this pathogen biofilm. This is really the important thing curing periodontal patients. So here you typically have those parasites, the amoeba feeding. Here it's feeding on the white cell. So it leaves some kind of a, what we call a ghost cell. That means uh, neutrophil having all those um, collagenase and proteases, all enzymes that will be down this sulcus and uh, contribute to uh, eliminate, uh, uh, remove the bone around the teeth. So if we look at this parasite, very important parasite, which is very large, I mean, it's very easy to see. Here you have a little uh, film or movie, uh, accelerated movie. So you see how it can, uh, in, uh, in fact, it's accelerated eight times. So you see in, uh, um, 20 seconds, how it does eat the nucleus of the white cell. So your white cell has lost the protein of the nucleus and you cannot um, continue to have normal immunity of the white cell. So amoeba is very big. It can, it can be 50 micron up to 100 micron. We clearly see the nucleus with the karyosome and chromatin here, and you see many vacuole. Uh, those vacuole are uh, what they eat today. So like this amoeba here eaten about uh, 20 nucleus of white cell during the day. So really it is a aggressive predator present in almost 100% uh, almost of the disease. We have some French, uh, Can some Canadian friends who uh, did some study about taking plaque on the color of the teeth, not supragingival, so they have less uh, 6% only. But if you look at normal PCR and what we have done as work, we find 70, 69 to 80%. And if you look at microscope, you'll find those parasites in about 99 to 100% in the active periodontal uh, disease. So the amoeba just is able to displacement, to eat the nucleus. It has a uh, uroid, which is some kind of pathogen uh, way uh, of activity. So it really phagocytized the nucleus of the white cell. And from that time, the white cell, the neutrophil or leukocyte cannot, cannot do net activity. It cannot do apoptosis anymore. Um, not doing this, it will, re, re, it will make uh, curing of the patient impossible. So this is why this is chronic periodontal disease, unless you remove the, uh, the real cause of it. So what's in the microbiota? If we look back clearly, healthy patient, very easy. You will see with the microscope, epithelial cell here, dots and line, cocci and filament, those are green complex of Sokransky. This is what we see in all cured or healthy patient. Uh, you look at patient with gingivitis, you'll find mostly those uh, white cells, those are neutrophil everywhere with the granules dancing within it, with nucleus, and you see some spirochetes, mostly spirochetes, some vibrio. So this is typical of gingivitis. So 
gingivitis is very different from health and is very different from periodontal disease. Now, if we use a film of periodontal disease, what we can see at low power, so we use low power uh, on a um, dark background, and you see we can see those parasites everywhere, like here there's about uh, 10, 15, 20, or sometimes 50 parasites. They look like little donuts here with the black surrounding. So you see those amoeba everywhere, amoeba, 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 nets of, uh, nests of amoeba, so we clear see, clearly see this infection and all the little granules moving inside here are the neutrophil granules, azurophil granules. So this confirmed the periodontal infection. So we see the bacilla, you see the spirochete and the vibrios. So all three bad bacteria, you can see the parasite. Uh, with the pseudopod going everywhere like this, eating nucleus of white cell and eating also um, inside of red cell. So we see those nucleus, which is inflammatory cell, leukocyte. So you have leukocyte, you have infection, you have parasite, you have pathogen bacteria, motile bacteria. So this clearly is periodontal disease microbiota. And if you look uh, a little more of those, you see in this case, we have many neutrophil, and I'll show you some um, trichomonostinax, which is a second uh, parasite, a flagellate. Uh, uh, you have the parasite amoeba, and you have the parasite flagellate, trichomonostinax. And having those two in the same time, you have a more aggressive disease. So you see many motile bacteria, neutrophile again, spirochetes, neutrophile, and you have here a couple of those uh, trichomonostinax. So when you have those trichomonostinax, you have curiously aggressive disease and bone can just go away within uh, one or uh, two years, you lose uh, most of the bone. So this is a good indication of the disease. So this sequence we understand health you know health and those bacteria epithelial cells just go with normal circus no bleeding circus when you have gingivitis you have uh, uh, motile bacteria you have leukocyte coming in and this is this is like opening the door to having parasites and other bacteria getting within the gingivitis to cause the disease so periodontal disease clearly goes with this deep sulcus, losing the bone, having those leukocytes, and having the amoeba or trichomonas getting into this, and then the disease just go on and go on and go on for years. And many times patient doesn't even know he has those uh, bacteria and parasites because dentists have a tendency to remove calculus. Calculus is not the problem. Calculus is just the consequence. So how can we go to health? What is the path toward health? How can we do this with predictability? This is what the nice thing with the microscope is we can predict we'll have complete healing and cure. So we made this treatment plan with our method. The first thing we want to do is remove those pathogens. Okay, so of course you cannot cure a patient if you still have those pathogen bacteria, pathogen parasite, those white cell everywhere, those white cell neutrophil, in fact, are pus, and you can see macrophage M12 uh, and M1, M2. So all this we can see this. So we have as the definition of the disease, eliminate the pathogen and remove those white cells. This is the first thing we have to do. And then, uh, of course, if you do this like give an antibiotic, maybe you remove most of the micro, but it comes back. So you have to teach the patient how to do his day-to-day -day disinfection. So we have to teach this patient what to do so he don't get the, the microbes again. So this is very important part of the disease, of the treatment of the disease. 
And the third thing we have to do is educate the patient how he went to health, from health to gingivitis to periodontal disease. So something happened around uh, within this patient. Why is he having gingivitis? Patient has to understand all this and see how he had those parasites coming within this gingivitis situation. Where does he get parasite? Is it from the husband, wife? Is it from a water, tropical area where we can find a lot of those uh, parasites within the, the, the water we drink, a uh, tropical uh, area where we go on holidays? So working on those three things, removing the pathogen, doing real disinfection with the patient, home disinfection, so the patient don't get the disease again, and understanding of the pathogenesis, now we can uh, have a long-term uh, cure of the patient. So looking at it on the clinical way, uh, we can measure this cure or measure this healing. So the goal we have, the objective we have, are relatively simple. Uh, this, and this is what we obtain doing the treatment. So first thing we want is no more pocket bed over than three millimeters. We want to probe one, two, or three millimeter. That's it. No fours, no fives, no tens, no nothing over three millimeter deep. So this is the goal. And this is what we obtain. Second thing is no bleeding. I see after room planning, scaling and room planning, I see half pockets are bleeding. If you look at studies, many studies, they show you still have 50% bleeding, 40% bleeding, even laser treatment after two, three months, you still see 50% uh, bleeding. So this is not cure, of course, and this is why you need some form of maintenance. But if you have maintenance, maintenance and bleeding, you'll get those parasites back again because they can nourish on this uh, bleeding tissue. So we want no pocket, we want no bleeding. This is the goal, this is what we obtain. Also what we want is confirm this with healthy microbiota. If you don't have those orange, red bacteria, if you don't have those parasites, you only have this green complex of Sokransky, you can make sure tissue will stay uh, healed uh, even all of the life of patient if he has normal hygiene. It's like uh, dental hygienists have no, not much periodontal disease as dentists don't have much periodontal disease. So it's not a genetic thing. It's not a real stress thing. It's not a uh, only smoking thing. It's just, no no bleeding, no bad microbe, normal hygiene. So if patient has normal hygiene, he won't get the gingivitis back again. And knowing there's no gingivitis, you won't get the periodontal disease. So we want to create like hygienist patient, okay? Or dentist equivalent patient. Then this is, uh, obtainable with our technique. So how do we do it? So we call it antiparasitic treatment because parasite are is the most uh, present thing within periodontal disease. It's just like uh, amoebian dysentery, or you have those parasites within the intestinal wall and, and within the liver destroying the tissue. So those are the same family of uh, 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 amoebiasis, um, intestinal amoebiasis or liver amoebiasis. So what we want for disinfection, the first and the best one we know is hydrogen peroxide. So we as patient remove uh, to um, forget about per, uh, toothpaste because normal toothpaste may be good for dental cavity, but it's not very good for uh, periodontal disease. So we start with hydrogen peroxide when patient will keep this for about one year. Uh, we dilute it uh, at 1% because 3% is a little too much. 1% is okay. First thing you see first month, there's no more bleeding. 
Okay, so bleeding stops with hydrogen peroxide. It is very good for this. And then we have other uh, projects we can use as uh, baking soda and salt. And salt is very important. Applying the salt will um, kill the parasite, make them explode because those parasites, even if aggressive pathogen, they are very sensitive to osmolarity. So will we make those parasites explode so they cannot um, be uh, alive again? So first thing for the treatment is remove parasite. Removing the parasite, you'll remove the bacteria, orange and red complex, you'll remove the bacteria in the same time. So first thing, remove the microbes. Forget a little bit about calculus. Calculus, you will remove it in a disinfected sulcus. So when the patient has no more infection, this normally we take some month and then we remove calculus in a clean, healthy sulcus. This becomes very easy to do and use of hydrogen peroxide and baking soda and salt will um, reduce the height of the gum and will have the bone uh, grow on, underneath so you'll have a 10 millimeter pocket may become a five or six millimeter pocket after a four month and then a four millimeter pocket so it becomes very easy to remove calculus you don't need to remove the cement from the root. We remove the infection, we remove the bad bacteria. So there's no need. We, uh, we on the opposite, we want to keep the cement for reattachment. So no currents, no um, cutting edges, because this removes cement and this cement, we want it, we want to keep it for reattachment. Okay, so first thing, disinfection, remove all those bugs, remove all the inflammatory cells. Then from now, you can remove calculus without sharp instrument, just um, subgingival um, uh, detartrage. And then we leave some time, so most of the time, if you have three or four months with this uh, disinfected area, it gives some time to for the bone to rebuild and mostly in vertical defect uh one two three wall you can you can see easily the bone is growing back without any need for uh particular help it just go with healing of bone healing of bone of from the mouth is the same as healing of the bone of the leg so bone is a bone so uh, it just heal with some time and then when you are completely healed, we make sure everything is um, we make sure everything uh, is fine and no gingivitis is back. So there's no more contamination and no more of the disease. Sorry for the phone, we're, we're in uh, <laughs> confinement, so it's like normal uh, <laughs> normal uh, here at the time of uh, COVID. So treat antiparasitic treatment. Uh, we can do with the microscope. So you see we have a big uh, television screen. The patient can see uh, what's in his mouth. This we can do every month and follow the patient until he is completely cured. So we simply take some uh, saliva to make uh, this um, this analysis, biofilm analysis. So don't take uh, water from... Um, your area don't take a ranger solution or whatever you need to have subgingival subgingival saliva you need to have a sublingual pardon me lingual uh, saliva to make sure you uh, have those parasites alive other way it's like you kill the parasite putting them within the water and then you don't see them so it's very important you use patient saliva to uh, look at this um, at this biofilm. So we take large slides, which are 44 millimeter large. So we take three area, deepest area of the patient to make our first diagnostic. And we can explain to the patient those pathogen microbes and make our diagnostic. So this microscope is very uh, useful 
to do our uh, diagnostic. So we recommend actually this Leica, uh, what, whatever microscope is good, but have a, a hospital grade microscope. Microscope has to be a good uh, microscope. Uh, you, you have to spend maybe $4,000, $5,000 microscope, but it's like you will keep it for uh, years uh, long and it will uh, make sure you heal your patient. So it's really uh, fun, it's interesting. You explain to the patient. So we like to work with Leica DM750 actually because it has an integrated camera. You can put image uh, on the television screen, on your iPad, iPhone, computer, what, whatever. So if you want to try this, you can just call a representative uh, uh, helping us a little bit, is Anya Ipala. You can find his um, address and phone number if you want to try. Otherwise, you come to the um, seminar and then we show you how to work with this uh, microscope. So we take normal procedure, we do the periodontal charting, we have uh, many, uh, we, we use those six points and whatever, bleeding, uh, this can be do, done with the hygienist or the doctor, but what we want to measure, most important, is before and after. So what we want to see is, if you have a four millimeter pocket, it's one millimeter you would like to remove. If you have a five millimeter pocket, it's a two millimeter you would like to remove, or six millimeter pocket, you want to remove three of those to get back to at least three millimeters. So what we want to make sure is see how much, how many of those pockets over three for the full mount. You may have 200, you may have 300, 400 uh, pocket that over three, and we want to see before treatment and after treatment. So after treatment, we want to see less than 5% of those pockets. So this will make sure you have no more disease. So no more bugs, no more pockets, and no more bleeding. So when you do all this, you make sure your patient is cured. So we have some, uh, what we call periodex. So we have some uh, index of bleeding, calculus, uh, um, breath, uh, whatever clinical sign, and we also use this microbiota before and after, uh, and uh, we want to know everything about this. We have full periodex, so we know about medical, we know about clinical, we know the microbiota, we make sure diagnostics, stage and grades, we do a treatment, most of the time will be our technique, the uh, one, two, three, four, five, up to 10 appointments. And then we have our prognostic and our result with uh, numbers. So we want to give those numbers to the patient. Hey, you're 95% healed, you're 99% healed. You're, uh, you know, if you do root planning, you have 10%, 15% healing. So uh, of course, it's not fun to tell this to the patient, but if you have 95, 97, or 100% healing, Patients are pleased and dentist is happy too because patient has good uh, results. So you have a little overview here of the treatment. So uh, most of the time, most usual treatment will be about 10 appointments. I know it's a little long, but it takes this time to have bone regrow, to have the gum reduce to have bone regrow and to reef to find a new biologic space and it takes some time so if you do root planning and if you look after uh, four or six uh, weeks of course patients are not healed you almost need eight to 12 months sometimes a little more 15 months to have complete healing but don't let the patient go before he's completely healed with the microscope, you know where you are, you know your bleeding point, you know your pocket depth, and you want to make your patient like 95 to 100% uh, clinical parameters uh, perfect. So first appointment, second, you know, everything goes up to 15, about 15 months. So of course we take uh, uh, radiograph, photograph, periodontal survey. We work helimeter. We'll show you how we can do this during the seminar. And we do hygiene instruction. 
how to disinfect. So this part is very important. So the first four months mostly are dedicated to remove infection. And patients use this, uh, uh, whatever, it can be metronidazole cream, it can be uh, hydrogen peroxide. It's, we call it maintenance regimen. So we remove the bugs, we remove with uh, this hydrogen peroxide baking soda and salts, which is very effective, and metronidazole cream if we need. Sometimes we can use titras, saline, rinse. But what we will make sure is going to the fifth appointment where we will we'll remove calculus from the deeper pocket. We want to have perfect biofilm on the fifth month. So at the fifth month, if not, we give um, metronidazole to the patient, systemic metronidazole if patient needs it. Many patients like stage three patient will need this metronidazole. But either way, every time we want fifth month to have perfect biofilm. Now you can remove calculus without uh, putting some bugs in the, the other side of the quadrant of the patient, upper and lower. So fifth month, we're perfect. And we remove calculus, remove calculus, remove calculus. No sharp curettes, no sharp curettes. Just remove calculus. 10 millimeter pocket is reduced to six. So you only have to go three millimeter deep with simple instrument, piezo or whatever uh, you like to remove calculus. And within, when there's no infection, no bleeding, it becomes relatively easy. And then we have those uh, three, two, two times, three month period to make sure healing is completed. Normally at 12 months, we uh, will redo this charting procedure and we'll evaluate this, uh, um, part of that closing. And most patients, they have uh, like 95 to 100% pocket closure. So I'll show you this, uh, this like a young dentist starting with our technique. So he'd be a little uh, surprised seeing the bone here, like here, you have 10 millimeter pocket at the beginning and uh, at month nine doing Barner eight uh, treatment protocol is at the eight. Uh, he's uh, 3.5 and see the bone growing back. And then the year after seeing the patient, this is complete uh, bone regrowth by itself. No need for nothing. Don't do uh, nothing. Just remove bugs, remove calculus, let heal, and then bone will regrow back again. So this is relatively easy. So up to 10 millimeter, millimeter pocket is no problem. Don't need any surgery, no scaling, no root planning, just remove bug and then remove calculus. So I, I put you a little picture of what we see on the microscope. It's a little uh, caricature of what we see, but you see it's like evolution. You go from the green complex and this green complex, if you let it go, you'll have those actinomyces organization with uh, bacteria, and then you have neutrophil coming in over the time, and then you have bacillus, parakeet, vibrio, sometimes garnerella, you have many bacteria coming, coming in. Sometimes you have those, most of the time you have those parasite, amoeba, Tamoeba gingivalis, and sometimes trichomonas tenax, where you have more aggressive disease, and then you have bone loss which is producing bone loss? Is it the parasite? Is it the bacteria, porphyromonas? Uh, both of them, they mostly are together, but remove the amoeba is so easy, you will remove the porphyromonas at the same time. And then if you want to make your diagnostic, you'll see if you are here you're about gingivitis, some white cells, some spirochete, but if you go up to there with the parasite, which are about 100% in active disease, then you are clearly in periodontitis. Sometimes you may have systemic disorder with uh, fungi, candida, you can see this on the microscope too. But the idea is to remove all those pathogens, go back to this um, re uh, green complex of Sokransky, which is just dots and lines with epithelial cell, as I showed you at the beginning, 
this uh, little web conference. And then you can be sure if you have only this green complex, no pathogen, no inflammatory cell, patient has to be cured. It goes with it. We call it a tautology. It goes with it. No bad bacteria, no bad parasite, no white cell. You be sure patient is completely cured. So this is the goal. So in conclusion, we can have a little look at the easy patient, but I want you to see the difference. I mean, there's no surgery in there, no nothing. It's just, mm -hmm. you see the amoeba here at the beginning with the white cell, it's pus and parasite and bad bacteria, bacilla here. Uh, so this is periodontal disease. We use our technique and then we go to healing. Complete healing is just, dots, dots, little line and dots. Mostly this patient has little cocci and it has an epithelial cell. So there's no more pocket in there. Of course, bone will not regrow as you like all the time, but at that time, after one year, you easily can do those uh, grafting procedure and add uh, more uh, gum to uh, the root and then you'll, you'll create bone underneath if you have some horizontal defect like this one. So preventing periodontal disease, really it's easy. If you look at the microscope to the young one, young adult, 20 years old, 25 years old, you may find a little four millimeter pocket with periodontal disease stage one, and you can correct with a very easy procedure. If you clearly are having a periodontal general disease, genera uh, general disease, uh, you have to use this complete uh, treatment procedure. But recurrence is not really a very rare thing because patient has learned. We give about 15 minutes to the patient every appointment to do his disinfection, do his perfect hygiene, flossing and brushing, no dental form, no big brushes. Patient does it within the treatment procedure every month, every month. So it just became becomes like a hygienist, uh, as good as hygienist or dentist. So we regenerate the heart tissue, we remove the infection, we remove the inflammation. So we know where we are going, where um, we make sure it is, um, it is uh, no more inflamed okay so no more inflammation no more bugs so and then patient knows uh, he doesn't have to have gingivitis anymore so he know how to do it if ever a patient has gingivitis again he mostly call you hey i got i want one uh, tooth bleeding and you stop it right right on so and then know what to do while uh, treating most of the time we husband and wife because one is infected, the other one is infected too most of the time. So we have to look with the husband and wife, pets, little dogs, most dogs are infected with periodontal disease after three years old and see how we touch some patient to kiss the dogs almost. So watch it so you don't get parasite. But if you do not have gingivitis, you cannot get the periodontal disease. So the method is easy, non-invasive, no surgery. It can treat any severe periodontal disease as long as you have a little bit of bone left and you can cure the same thing, re-implantitis, uh, removing the same bugs. You can find them with the parasite, the amoeba, around uh, close to your implant. So we use the same technique for implant peri-implantitis. So what we want is no bleeding, no pocket, normal flora and autonomous patient on hygiene and this you can make sure it is uh, completely cured. So what we offer is precise protocol. It's really uh, with the checklist, every appointment, what you have to do. We give you the right tool and the biggest tool, important tool is the microscope because it gives you all the answers. And we have a network of dentists. You can uh, exchange with those dentists. Dentists 
normally are happy doing the, the seminars, learning to cure the patient, and we keep contact with the patient, whatever, Facebook, Twitter, or uh, WhatsApp, or whatever, we keep in contact. We can uh, help you with uh, biofilm. During the first years, you begin, uh, we, we're there and we can help you on this. We can really uh, per, support you in a personalized uh, way. So this is uh, relatively easy to, um, to keep contact. So I'll let you with Frederick. I hope I explain a little bit how uh, we do this curing uh, technique and periodontal disease. Frederick, uh, thank you to organize this uh, little session. I'll let you explain if you want to explain more about this uh, registration or seminar we can offer. And if there is any question from our audience, we'd be happy to answer. Thank you very much. Thank you so, mu so much, Mark, for this presentation. I hope that uh, everybody everybody did enjoy uh, this webinar as I did. Um, for sure, if you want to have more information about what we do and our next seminar, you just go on perioil.com. Uh, you'll see we will be in uh, Los Angeles in uh, June, then we'll move to New York in November, and we'll be in uh, Hawaii to, at the end of the year. We, we would be glad to meet you. Um, if you want to write us uh, an email, just try info at perioil.com and we'll give you a quick answer. So I hope, we, hope we'll see you soon. Thanks again, Marc, for your time. Thank you, Frédéric. And as Frédéric said, we like to see you. This is one day. Uh, this is easy. Uh, Honolulu one is uh, close to the AAP uh, meeting. So You're it's right. this to the American Academy of Periodontology meeting. This will be just beside American Academy uh, meeting. So thank you everyone and uh, have good uh, periodontal result and have fun doing periodontal, uh, treating periodontal disease and periodontal cure. Uh, we hope you give this opportunity to all your patients. Thank you very much for your See listening. You soon. See you soon.